Hi guys, how are you doing today? Thanks for stopping in. Hope you had a good weekend. Hope you had a good, uh, uh, a little bit of time off if you had, if you're not working, if you had some time off over the weekend, but I hope it went well. So Monday, April 6th, day number eight in our 40 days of hope as we're praying through a pandemic. A verse that I really, that stuck out to me yesterday in our reading was from Luke 12, verse 44, or excuse me, verse 14, where Jesus said, Watch out, be on guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. What great advice. And what a very, very important thing to kind of deep, dig deep within our within our psyche about what we're supposed to be pursuing in life. That life does not consist of abundance of possessions. That we don't have to have a lot of stuff. That's really, really important. And we don't have to spend money on it. We don't have to get insurance on it. We don't have to worry about it's going to be broken. But to live a simple life, that's one of the things that Jesus taught. So I really like that verse. Today we're going to be reading about uh, through Psalms 19 through 21 and also Luke 15 and 16. So when we look at the Psalms, just a few insights there. There's some, I call them just basic Psalms that David wrote. Psalms 19 is a hymn written focused on the majesty of God. And some of these Psalms are really good to use during worship services. Psalms 20 is a prayer, again, that could be used during a worship time. It almost sounds like it was written for uh, some kind of um, a worship experience that they were a part of. Psalms 21 is a psalm of praise for victories that came for the king. And again, David wrote this as well. But praising God for intervening, to fighting the, fighting the enemies and, and uh, taking care of business. So you'll see a lot of those kinds of psalms as we read through. There's 150 psalms, so we're on 20 of them. So we're, we're, we're on our way. In Luke 15, now in the New Testament, there's some really kind of a couple of different interesting sections there that I really, really like. The first one is in Luke 15, that whole chapter. It's the parable of the lost things. And it's one of my favorite chapters in all the Bible. Um, Jesus is hanging out. It starts out with that he's hanging out with a bunch of sinners, tax collectors and sinners, which he loved to do. And some Pharisees were complaining about that. And so Jesus starts teaching some parables. And he tells them about three things that were lost. There is a lost sheep, a lost coin, and a lost son. There was 99, 100 sheep in the fold, and there's one that got away, and it said the shepherd went out, the person went out to find it, and to bring it back into the fold. There was a lost coin from a woman, and then a lost son. A son left his father and got his estate, and he went to spend it on women, wild living, and crazy stuff. Then he comes back and begs to come back, and his father welcomes him in. So they're great parables, but there's three common things in each of those stories. Each of those... There's something of value that was lost. Of course, a sheep for a farmer or a shepherd was an important asset for building his wealth or taking care of his family. And so when you lose one, that's a big deal. The woman lost a coin. It could have been it could have been poor. It could have been, I've read stories and studied about, it could have been a part of her wedding, wedding dowry. They used to give coins in kind of a wreath-like that they would put over their head that would help kind of build the base of their, but it was something of great value. Uh, something that was worth a lot to her. And then, of course, a son. When a son walks away from a family and, and takes off and kind of is estranged from a family, that's a big deal. So there's something of value that's lost. And then the next step in each of those stories, that there's a great search involved. That that, that thing of value is so important that it called for an all-out search. And the third commonality thing is that once that item was found or that person was found, there's a huge celebration. It says that the uh, the shepherd would bring his buddies in and they celebrated. The woman brought people in to celebrate. And of course, the father threw a great big party for their son. The main point is that he's hanging out with Je or Jesus is hanging out with lost people. And he was trying to tell the, the Pharisees, he says, Here, here's the deal. I said, if these lost people are found, all of heaven rejoices. Just like a lost item that we have in our, when we rejoice, all of heaven breaks out in applause when they give their life to the Lord. That's why I'm hanging out with them, and that's why it's really, really important. The Pharisees are kind of compared to the second son in the last story. Not the prodigal son that took off and then came back, but the son that was that was um, jealous of the one that left. He says, Dad, I've been here. I've worked hard. How come you've never thrown a party for me? The Pharisees were kind of complaining about that. Look at us. We were living a righteous life. We're doing everything right. And you're talking about giving the kingdom to these people over here? That sounds crazy. So it's really about the passion of God and the passion of Jesus. And that's one of my passions is lost people. That's why I resonate with this with this text so much. 
Then in Luke 16, there's another important parable there as well, the parable of the shrewd manager. The rich man discovered that one of the managers was mismanaging his riches, so he confronts him. And so the manager got scared, and so he went out and made some really good decisions, and the manager was impressed by that. Uh, the key out of that text, it's a little bit, it's not long, but it's, it's a longer section. The key is about greed and about who's your God. And that's where we get the verse shows up, you cannot serve both God and mammon. And how important that is in a consumer society that we got to be careful about gathering stuff together. And managing our money, here's another thing, managing our money is directly related to our spiritual life. It really is. Uh, there's something about managing money that's really, really important. In fact, as an elder, it says in Timothy that an elder needs to manage his household well and manage his resources well. I tell, when I give advice, like about Bible camps to teenagers about who they should date, I tell them that they should date someone that manages their money well, because about 50, 55% of all divorces are caused by mismanagement of money or over money. That's how big a deal it is. And so I like that part of that story. And the last thing, the last story is found in that in, um, in Luke 16 is kind of an interesting story. Jesus tells a story about a rich man and Lazarus. Rich man had everything in life, and Lazarus was very poor. He was a beggar, and he had sores over his body. And they both die, but they go both go to the afterlife. One is in Hades. The rich man is in Hades, and it says Lazarus is in the the bosom of Abraham or in the presence of Abraham. And Hades isn't very fun. And Lazarus can see across the way, there's this large distance between them. And he begs, he begs Abraham to send Lazarus over and give him a drink of water. And Abraham says, he can't do that. And um, this is what happens. He says, you had all the joys of life and Lazarus had none of those joys of life. And now you're receiving ultimately what you pursued in life. And then Lazarus, or excuse me, the rich man says, well, could you go tell people back at the world about what's happening? And Abraham says, we did. We sent Moses and the law and we sent the prophets and people ignored that. And then he says, well, can you send a dead person over there? They'll, they'll believe a dead person. And Jesus is thinking, you know, Jesus is telling the story, so he's the one that brings that up. And Abraham says, no, they're not, if they're not going to believe the Moses and they're not going to believe the prophets, they're not going to believe a dead person as well. It's really kind of a sad story. A couple of things out of that. First, it says, Jesus wouldn't tell that story if this doesn't happen. So when we die, we actually go to a waiting place. Our souls go. Those that are, or there's a, they call it the first judgment. The first ones go to the to Hades, which is a place of the souls, the dead souls. And that's where bad angels go to, and that's where bad people go to, or people that didn't follow the Lord. And then there's a place called the first heaven, where they go and be in the presence, Abraham is in the presence uh, of God. Now, when we die, when Jesus comes back again, there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth, and then we're all going to go dwell there together as far as those that are following Jesus. So so our bodies just don't go to sleep, but we actually go and dwell somewhere until Jesus returns. The second thing is that you don't get a second chance after you die. And that's really scary to me, that you got to make your decision now, and you don't get a second chance once you do. And the third thing is it doesn't sound very fun. If you didn't follow the Lord, and if you pursued the possessions and things, it's just not a good place to live. And so take that as a warning to make sure that you get your life in order. That's why we're reading the Bible. We're trying to get our life in order. Hey, great reading. Just